Welcome to 206 Sheet Metals. Uh, I made this short video clip to show you the things that you are going to need. Now if you'll take a look down here, you can see some of the things that you have to have. You're going to need Sharpies. And I have here precision tip Sharpies. Uh, these are the ultra fine type Sharpie. Now, don't get confused between the different kinds of Sharpies. This is the big fat mark on a cardboard box Sharpie. Don't get it. This is the ordinary fine tip Sharpie. And if you're careful, you can work with the fine tip Sharpie. But the best thing to work with is the precision tip, precision tip Sharpie. You can see it makes a very precise line. And that very precise line is going to be necessary when we need to be, to be doing very precise work. When I can, I like to buy this style. This is the fine tip and the precision tip in the same Sharpie. But uh, a little earlier today when I went out shopping, these were $12 and my ordinary precision tip Sharpies were like $5. So I went with the precision tip ship. Let me try that again. I went with the precision tip Sharpies. They'll work just fine. Now, in addition to Sharpies, other things that you are going to have to have, we obviously have the obligatory safety glasses. Um, we're going to be working with a lot of pounding and chips and a variety of other things. And uh, when you're old, like me, you can buy these with uh, bifocals in them. Yay. Uh, other things you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have numbered drill bits and you're going to have to have a number 40 a number 30 and a number 21 uh, we will order those as a class though when you get into class they're a lot cheaper if we order them in bulk so we can get them for about a buck a piece instead of about three or four dollars a piece when we order them in bulk you're going to have to have a set of pin punches and that set of pin punches is going to need to have a three thirty seconds pin punch a 1 8 inch pin, pin punch and a 5 16 inch pin punch. Now usually when you buy the set you're going to have a lot more than that but those are the sizes we're going to have to have. You're also going to have to have a spring loaded center punch. Actually that's not true but it's cheap enough that you're going to need to have it. You could use a regular center punch but then you'd have to set up for each thing. The spring loaded center punch all you do is press and it makes a nice little spot to begin the drill. And it's so much easier to use the spring loaded center punch since these are available at Menards or Harbor Freight for about $4 each. Just buy one. Let's call that a half to half. Now, The next category of things I want to show you are the, this will make your life a lot better and you probably want one. You have to have a ruler of some kind, but since we're going to be grading to the nearest 32nd of an inch, I've personally found that my students do a lot better if they buy one of these digital calipers or a dial caliper. This will allow us to measure easily to the nearest hundredth of an inch and this will give us very good results. These are available for about 10 bucks from Harbor Freight if you catch them on sale. And that's where I recommend you go for them. Uh, so the caliper, you're going to want the caliper. You probably should have a set of scissors. You'll need it for several different things. Not too much needs to be said about those. And you're going to want to have a pair of snips. Buy nice snips. This is one of the places where I don't say go to Harbor Freight because Harbor Freight snips don't cut. You need to get a good pair of snips, uh, Craftsman, Weiss, uh, snap on whatever you need, but get a good pair of sheet metal snips and only cut sheet metal with them. Don't ever lend your snips out to anyone because they can get damaged really easily. A lot of my students choose to purchase their own rivet fan. Now I have some rivet fans available for lend out in the sheet metal lab, but a lot of students find that these are important enough they go ahead and buy them themselves. These run about $35 and what they do is evenly space out a row of rivets. You can do it with a ruler, very carefully calculate, okay, I need a sh rivet every three quarters of an inch, and you can sit there and mark off those three quarter inches with your Sharpie, but it just works a lot better if you can take this and pull it out to three quarters of an inch and put a dot every three quarter inch. <coughs> Excuse me. 
The last thing in the you really ought to have it category is a set of fractional drill bits. Now we had numbered drill bits that you have to have, but our fractional drill bits are also going to be pretty important. And a small set that goes between a sixteenth of an inch and a quarter of an inch is only a few dollars, and that should probably be in your box as well. The last thing that I'm going to talk to you about is drills. Now you do not have to have a drill. I have drills and I will be providing those drills and you can use my drills uh, as well. But if you want to work as a professional, you buy your own tools. And when you do that, there's a couple of different kinds of drills. The cordless drill is very useful for a lot of things and you can use it in this class if you like. However, it generally doesn't work that well in sheet metal use. For one thing, you run out of uh, batteries pretty quickly, and for another thing, it's big and it's bulky. Um, professional sheet metal work is almost exclusively done with pneumatic drills, and these pneumatic drills uh, run very smoothly. They run cool instead of hot. They don't produce sparks, which is one of the reasons why they're preferred in aviation. They don't catch fuels on fire if you're working around a gas tank, and um, they also run relatively smoothly for long periods of time. They last a lot longer than a cordless drill does. So if you were to decide to do a cordless drill, I've had a few students do it. In general, it hasn't worked out very well for them. But if you do decide to do a cordless drill, don't go cheap on a cordless drill. On the air drill, I guess the same advice is true there as well. Don't cheap out on the air drill. This is about a $135 Pan American tool drill. And this is personally my favorite drill that I have in my uh, box. I do have a Sioux $300 drill, but I like this $135 Pan American tool drill better. And I'll send you details on this on a link as to where you can do this. This one has a reverse up across the top and power across the side. That pretty much summarizes up the tools that I am going to be asking you to get with the exception of files. I forgot to put a file in here and it would be wise if you have a mill file. Actually a single cut mill file is the best that you can get for this. And that should pretty much do the required and recommended tools. Thanks. Looking forward to seeing you in class.